All right, this next video is not for a rigid tool, so don't worry, you're still watching the right channel. Uh, what this is for is to show you uh, how I shoot in the rain. So I was out at a pretty big match this last weekend, and we had some uh, decent rain for short periods of time, and it was enough that it caught a number of people off guard, I think. Um, and you know, all the, you know, the people that have been there and, and shot a lot, obviously they were ready and prepared. Uh, but it really made me realize how many people just don't approach having a plan for shooting in the rain, much less a plan when they're at a match. So let me show you what I've got. Uh, I will post up another video of how it actually works uh, on, the, on the gear, but let's go over what the gear I use is. And remember, uh, this is what works for me. It doesn't make it the only way, and it certainly doesn't make it uh, the only right way. So uh, here's what I've got. First off, everything is in uh, a soft, somewhat soft uh, pouch that I can unzip. And the reason I do this is because I want all my rain gear to be in one place. If I'm going to a match, I don't want to have to search through my gun room, my reloading stuff, whatever, to try to find all the components that are in here. Uh, if I'm at a match, I want somebody to be able to grab my rain gear or have me grab my rain gear without worrying that they didn't get everything or that I didn't get everything. So really important that you keep all your rain gear together. So I actually have it broken down into two segments. I have a smaller rain gear pouch, which I can put in my range bag if the weather looks, eh, you know, maybe it's like 10% chance of spotty showers or something. This is my most basic uh, must have for shooting in the rain. And then I have my uh, hell in a hand basket uh, rain gear also in here. So let's look at the basic setup. So the basic setup is just in a big canvas pouch that I purchased from I don't know, Home Depot or Lowe's or something. And it has a couple of things in it. One are these arms from a company called Sorties and they will clip on a scope. So they actually act as a sort of umbrella and uh, I will put a link in the description so that if you are looking to get a set of these, you know where to find them. And then I have my pre-cut shower curtain. And I will, again, show how this all works. But you can see it's, you know, it obviously doesn't translate well because it's clear on video. But what I've done is a couple things. I have a label here that says top uh, right here. And then I've got a piece of Velcro. Uh, this fits a very particular way on top of my setup and it makes it totally functional for me to uh, shoot in the rain. Now, something to remember is that if you are shooting in the rain, especially at a registered match, uh, any rain gear you put on your gun is going to count towards the weight of your gun. Uh, so if you were uh, shooting a gun that was just a hair under a uh, legal standard of 22 pounds and you put half a pound of rain gear on top uh, it is now a not legal for competition weapon and and that's really important because at a big match you, you know what if you shot a record or what if it was contested that uh, whatever you did uh, you know wasn't fair according to the the rules of the match and so you really need to make sure that you're picking gear that is light that is functional and you need to make sure you weigh your guns with your rain gear if you plan on shooting at all in the rain at a registered match. And, and to be honest, um, I make sure that whether I'm at a registered match or not, that I'm within the, the weight limit uh, because, you know, just as a competitor, I don't want to have an unfair advantage. And so uh, I make sure that anything I'm going to have on there meets the weight requirement. Now, I have a second uh, tarp. Uh, or shower curtain inside. And one of the other requirements is that you cannot have more than a one meter square uh, covering over your rifle and scope. Uh, it cannot bridge from the scope or gun onto your head. So you can't, you know, you can't create, if this is your head and this is your rifle, you can't create a bridge to keep rain from coming between you and your rifle scope or anything. Uh, it can only cover the rifle and the scope. Uh, you can certainly wear a hat that covers, but it can't be connected to the covering on your gun. Uh, in any way. And uh, so it has to be one meter square and it needs to be clear. Now, how and how and when this is enforced is obviously, you know, pretty loose in my experience. But again, I like to make sure that I am playing by the rules. So what I do is uh, I just buy some shower curtain and uh, these are one meter squares so that if for some reason this tarp that I've pre-made doesn't work, 
that I have uh, plenty of extra tarp on me in case I have an emergency. And I will tell you, I have extra sets of these arms. Uh, I don't think I've ever been to a match where I've shot in the rain where I haven't let somebody borrow it. Uh, I also keep a couple of uh, D-clips, uh, which are the little, um, let me show you here, uh, a couple of, I keep these clips, you know, little binder clips, whatever you want to call them, and those are for attaching the tarp uh, or whatever you have onto your um, setup. Now, the way the sorties comes, it, it, it relies on a lot of Velcro, and I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I can tell you in the in the wind and rain and whatnot, Velcro is not always your friend. So the binder clips are a big plus for me. So this is my at minimum. So again, I might throw this in my range bag and leave the rest of this in my truck. Uh, if it is a light chance of rain or very light chance of rain, if we are looking at a heavy chance of rain, this whole thing's coming with me. And here's why. I have a even more tarp that's pre-cut. So I've got, I've got about three extra pieces of uh, shower curtain. Again, you never know what's gonna happen. I have a giant shower curtain and that is for going over my gear behind the line. So if I have a pull cart or maybe my bag and a couple other things, uh, I have something with me without trying to find a tarp out of my truck or whatnot. So this is going to cover my gear. And then I also have a couple of uh, bungee cords and these are designed so that uh, they're easy to hook on. They, they come from Home Depot. You can adjust the length by tying a knot wherever you want. And I really like these because if I have my pull cart and you know, I'll give you a perfect example. We were at Nationals last year and uh, I did not have these bungees to be honest at that time. And uh, we had set all our stuff. Um, we kind of knew it looked like it might rain a little bit. Uh, I had a, you know, a full blown, uh, a six by six tarp, uh, that I had with me. I had pulled it over my wagon and tucked it under the wheels, uh, to help hold it down. But we had some pretty decent wind that went along with it. And at that time I had to go down to the pits and I was on a very long pit change. Uh, so it was about an hour and a half, almost two hours before I was coming back out. And, uh, I can't remember exactly, but I want to say maybe, I don't know, halfway to three quarters of the way through, uh, the, the pit service. Uh, it starts raining and just howling with wind for a, a short period of time. And when I got back up to the line, uh, part of my tarp had, you know, found its way out from under the wheels on my cart. And, you know, luckily everybody on the line was, was very courteous. Uh, they, they really attended to all the gear that was on the line. And, and we certainly got lucky in that respect. That is not always the case. Sometimes you just don't have a chance to do it or, or people are busy doing, you know, protecting their own stuff. Uh, in any event, uh, that next day I went out to a store and, um, and grabbed a set of these cables. So, uh, now I can strap it down, hook it to my cart and that tarp is not coming off no matter what. And the last thing I have is a really nice set and don't have to be nice, but I've got some Helly Hansen, uh, rain pants. And, uh, the only other thing I don't have in here because, uh, I haven't replaced it since my match is just a very cheap poncho. Now I have a good rain jacket. Uh, but, uh, there are times where maybe again, it's in the truck or something happens, uh, and you might get caught off guard. And so I just have, you know, from the dollar store, uh, they're just cheap little ponchos that come in a little plastic pack. They don't take up much room, but again, this is about, uh, you know, holy crap, it's, it's coming down. I need to get everything covered, including myself. So here's all the gear. Now, the other pieces that you may... The other pieces that you may want to consider are going to be ways to keep score and ways to keep your ammo really dry. Okay, so here's one, and and I think that's a really great um, it's a really great way to protect everything. So these are made by a company called Paper Dry. They're giant coaches clipboards or contractor clipboards, and they're spring loaded, so they pop up. So you can see you get some height out of it. Now I can easily fit one or two boxes of ammo. I can fit paper under here. And the way I have it set up, which you'll see in the next video, is that when I have everything draped over my gun, uh, it lays down over the top of this so that it gives me a little extra reach that's protected. It protects from the rain uh, and wind blowing in and is completely legal to use. I have a second one of these that is smaller. Uh, it is um, about a half, half sheet, a little bigger than a half sheet of paper. 
and I use that as my regular scoring board and it also flips up. So if there are light sprinkles, I can flip it over, put in my scorecard and, and keep going. Uh, I can also hold notes. Uh, so like inside here, you can actually hold notes and whatnot. And uh, I'll kind of show you that setup as well. But uh, these are these are really great. Now they are obviously a little bulky. Uh, I put these in my in my big Pelican rifle case when I'm traveling. Uh, it tends to work really well um, as far as you know where to put it if you're traveling. So those are all the pieces of the rain gear that I've got. And um, you know, there's certainly other ways to do it. I've seen some people do some pretty elaborate setups. I'm not totally sure that all of them uh, meet NRA regulations or are necessarily practical. I've seen everything from giant uh, like plexiglass tents that go over and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing to remember is when you're setting it up, it cannot be connected to the ground in any way. So you can't, you can't like stake it down. Uh, it has to be connected to the gun only, and it has to be able to come up with the gun if it were to be pulled straight up from the, uh, front rest. So, uh, there's, there's that aspect of it. There's the pieces that I use and how I transport it. You can see how simple it is. And uh, check out the next video and I'll show you how I actually set it up for shooting.